There's something uniquely eerie about abandoned places, especially abandoned homes, which were at one point a family's most private and personal space. But you know what's creepiest of all? Deserted mansions. Though they used to be worth millions and represent grandeur and wealth, the homes represented here now lie empty in disrepair. And I'd bet my nightlight that most of these still have plenty of ghostly inhabitants lurking around, even if there aren't any mortal occupants roaming the grand halls anymore. Here are the top 10 most compelling abandoned mansions around the world, and prepare to be thoroughly creeped out by their backstories. Oh, it smells. Yeah, look on the floor. Oh, um, is that a cat? Yeah. Number one, Lennox Castle. We're starting with this doozy. Lennox Castle in Scotland was built in 1812 for John Lennox Kincaid Lennox. He was supposedly a distant relative of the clan Kincaid, who were descendants of some of the notable ancient earls of Lennox. Long story a little shorter, the castle was home to an important Scottish family until it was converted into an asylum for the mentally ill in the 1930s and a hospital during World War II, when the existing mentally ill patients were transferred to other buildings on the property. Apparently, fights among the patients were common, and in one particularly bad fight, much of the staff along with uninvolved patients ran from the hospital. But the rioters were locked inside, and in the end, they significantly damaged the ward. The hospital was vacated by the 1980s and officially closed in 2002. There's now talk of converting the building into flats. Number 2. Linwood Hall Oh, how the mighty have fallen. To say Linwood Hall is massive would be a massive understatement. Indeed, it's the 12th largest historic house in the US. It features a whopping 110 rooms, like a ballroom that can accommodate 1,000 guests. Outfitted in neoclassical architecture, and it once held the most important private art collection of European masterpieces in the country. Unsurprisingly, it's from the Gilded Age. It was built in 1900 for Peter R. L. Brown Widener, a businessman who became wealthy from investing in public transit and meatpacking, among other things. He had three sons, one of whom died on the Titanic, and lived in the house until he died in 1915. His son Joseph inherited the mansion and lived there until he died in 1943 and no surviving members of his family, even his children, wanted to take on the responsibility of the place. By 1945, Widener's estate was valued at just over $98 million. A developer later tried to sell Linwood, but the only taker was a fundamentalist preacher, Carl McIntyre, who bought the home in 1952 for $192,000. It went into foreclosure in 2006 when the McIntyre organization couldn't pay the mortgage. Number 3. Ashlar Hall From the outside, this 11,000 square foot Memphis, Tennessee mock castle doesn't look like it boasts a history. And its earlier history is relatively similar. A wealthy man, Robert Brinkley Snowman, built the property in 1896 for his family and dubbed it Ashlar Hall. They lived there and enjoyed its 8 bedrooms, 6 bars, 5 bathrooms and indoor pool until his death in 1942. After about a decade of grueling upkeep, the family decided to turn it into a place of business, operating it as a restaurant. At some point after that, Ashlar Hall and the surrounding land were purchased by investors who built skyrises around it and left it to rot. But the inside looks completely different today, telling a decidedly less conventional tale. Fast forward to the 1990s, when Robert Hodges, aka the self-proclaimed Prince Mongo, transformed it into a nightclub, the castle. Mongo believes he's an alien ambassador from the imaginary planet of Zambodia, and famously sports steampunk goggles, a long white wig, and rubber chickens around town. Among many of his bizarre decisions, he filled the parking lot with sand so it could be used as a beach to take the party outside when the fire marshal shut down the nightclub due to repeated overcrowding issues. The most recent owner, property developer Juan Montoya, bought it at a tax sale for $59,000 and plans to transform the property into an event venue. Number 4. Bannerman's Castle Bannerman's Castle is perched on an island in New York's Hudson River. Francis Bannerman VI, whose family launched a military surplus business post-Civil War, purchased the island in 1900. To use as a warehouse, they bought 90% of the weapons the US military captured from the Spanish during the Spanish-American War, for example. He also built a smaller residential structure nearby, but construction ended with his death in 1918. A few later explosions hurt the business further, 
When legislation changed in the 20th century, sails rapidly declined, and then a storm devastated the island, destroying the ferry people used to access it. It was pretty much vacant up until the late 1960s when the state bought it. It was open to the public for tours for about a year, until another fire ravaged it, but the Bannerman Castle Trust recently started holding tours again. Number 5. Louis Family Mansion Built in 1929 in Baroque style, the Minxion Ghost House aka the Louis Family Mansion is a freaky place with a heartbreaking history. Located in the Taiwanese countryside, it's been abandoned since the 1950s when the family fled abruptly. Like all mysterious places, there's plenty of lore around the family and why they left the once beautiful place. Rumor has it that the family's maid was having an affair with her employer, Louis Rong Yu, and when the secret became public, she died after jumping down a wall. But since she did not live to tell the tale, it's hard to know exactly what happened. A few years later, the property was occupied by members of the Kuo Mintang of China, or KMT, many of whom were also thought to have died of suicide, which exacerbated its reputation as haunted. Of course, there are also other far less morbid narratives out there, like the idea that new business required the family to move closer to downtown. Number 6. Haha -Ha Tonka Mansion Deep in Missouri's Ozarks is the Haha -Ha Tonka Mansion. Some claim the state's park name means Laughing Waters, which could either be adorably cheerful or downright creepy, depending on how you see it. This shell of a mansion was the dream of wealthy businessman Robert Snyder. He got to work building a European-style castle in his private lake in 1906, but he soon died in one of Missouri's first automobile accidents. His sons continued construction until the mansion was completed in 1920. One of them lived there until he ran out of money due to a string of land rights lawsuits. Eventually, Snyder's son was driven off the property and it functioned as a hotel and resort in the mid-20th century. Eventually, the hotel was ruined by a fire and they finally closed down shop. The remains are now a popular site, which you too can visit if you get tired of water skiing and hiking. Number 7. Mud House Mansion Located in Fairfield County, Ohio until recently, the Mud House Mansion has a bad reputation. Nobody could seem to agree on when it was built, but it dates back to sometime between the 1840s and 1900. Unlike the other abandoned mansions in this video, you sadly can no longer visit it, as the home was demolished in 2015, after not being occupied since the 1930s. The last resident, at least legally speaking, was Lulu Hartman Mast, and the current owner of the property is her relative, Jean Mast. Because there's so little information about who lived here and when, and because abandoned places tend to ignite the dark side of the imagination, there are tons of legends around alleged atrocities occurring and consequent hauntings. The sources don't seem to be very credible, though. Number 8. Villa de Vecchi Villa de Vecchi is foreboding alright. Just consider that looming fog blanket. Located near Lake Como, Italy, the House of Witches dates back to 1854 to 1857, when it was built by a summer house for Count Felix de Vecchi. The family was only able to spend a few years here, as their lives were mired in tragedy right after it was built. First, the architect died a year after construction, then in 1862, Count de Vecchi came home to discover his wife murdered and his daughter missing. When he could not find her after a year of searching, he died by suicide. His brother then moved into the home, and his family continued to live there until World War II. It's been vacant since the 1960s, and an avalanche in 2002 wiped out all the house in the area except this one. Spooky. Number 9. Hegeler Karis Mansion The Hegeler Karis Mansion in La Salle, Illinois is one of a few abandoned residences that was actually restored and turned into a landmark. It was built for Henry C. Hegeler, a zinc manufacturer and publisher by the same architect who completed the state capitol building and the famous Chicago Water Tower. The Hegelers had 10 children, but two of their daughters died in the same year, with another passing away at age 23. His descendants lived in the seven-floor home until the last one died in 2001. It was only empty for a while before it was renovated and turned into a museum. Though it has the appearance of a haunted house, it's just old and actually has a nice cheerful energy, some say. Number 10. John List House if you've heard enough about tragic family murders, maybe stop about here. 
In November of 1971, John List killed his entire immediate family in their New Jersey home, including his wife, his mother, and two children. He then proceeded to go watch his 15-year-old son play a soccer game only to shoot and kill him when they got home. Then he lined up all the bodies except his mother's in the ballroom, which had a signed Tiffany's stained glass skylight worth at least $100,000 at the time turned the radio to a religious station, turned on all the lights, cut out his face from a family photo, and fled. The bodies in crime scene weren't discovered until a month later when schoolmates, neighbors, and teachers started wondering where the family was. Meanwhile, List had settled in Denver under a false name, working as a controller at a factory and running a carpool service at his Lutheran church. He met a woman there in 1985 and married her, and wasn't caught and arrested until 1989. He never took full accountability. A new house was erected on the property a few short years later in 1974, after a suspected arson destroyed the original. These grandiose structures once stood as symbols of wealth and success, but now stand as haunting reminders of what was. From the mysterious circumstances surrounding their abandonment to the eerie stories that linger within their walls, each of these mansions holds its own unique history. We hope you enjoyed the video about the creepiest abandoned mega mansions and their past stories. So we hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I'm sure you're going to love to watch our video about 10 mysterious photos that cannot be explained. Make sure to click the subscribe button for the future notifications and never miss our amazing videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Till then, stay tuned.